Okay, so I'm going to start with a new file and actually let's check out my image. So I've made a lot of the stuff in the scene already, but I haven't made the inkwell yet and the pen, so let's work on that one. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, um, let's see, my front view. I can just click this button right here and see where it says front down here at the bottom. If I just hit my space bar with the mouse inside of that window, it'll enlarge and show me just the front view. And if I hit my space bar again, it'll go back to that four view. And I could do the same thing with perspective view or the top or the side. Uh, but I'm just going to do the front for right now. Uh, so I'm going to go to view and I'm going to go to image plane and I'm going to click on import image. So here's my concept or the concept that I'm using. And it's now been put into Maya. So I can scale that if I want to and move it out of the way. I usually recommend moving it um, just so you're not, it's not interfering with the model that you're making. You go back to your front view and I'm just, um, I'm holding down my spacebar, holding down the right mouse button and then dragging down to the front view and then releasing an app. And when you deselect the, uh, the image plane, uh, you can just select it again if you need to. Um, let's see, let's try and put that kind of in the center there because whenever we're working, we're, we're building in the center. Uh, all right, so I'm guessing this probably has five to six sides. And I think I'm just going to make it a six-sided piece just to make it a little easier. So I'm going to use the polygon cylinder button and create a cylinder. And we'll go back to the perspective view and scale it down just a little bit. All right, so over here in the inputs, and this is the channel box. If you don't see it, you can just click this button right here. If you click on poly, poly cylinder one, you'll get a few options here. So the subdivision axis, if I um, hold down my middle mouse button and drag to the left, it will change that number and my cylinder will slowly get smaller. So let's, uh, let's actually scale up the top just a little bit because it does seem you know what, I probably have symmetry turn on and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. So this is the modeling toolkit. Right here is symmetry and I'm gonna to go to off. By default, your symmetry probably won't be on, but since I've been working in other files, I had it turned on. Okay, so I'm gonna scale this up just a little bit and let's just make it a little smaller. So let me go to our front view. Um, actually, it looks like I got out of the front view here. so change that back and I'll just scoot this over a little bit so it's easier to see I'm going to scale it in the Y direction I'm hitting R to change to the scale tool so W is for move E is for rotate and R is for scale um, and T will hide those manipulator handles or bring back the um, dialog box here if you were using one. All right, let's, uh, let's bring those up just a little bit. And extrude the faces. So control E is extrude or you can go to this button right here I'm just gonna hit Control E. Um, you have a few options. Uh, again, with this little dialog box that comes up, I'm gonna resize it a little bit, you can do that. Uh, so the thickness, if you click, or if you left click and drag, it will 
increase or decrease the thickness. Same with the translation or offset. I think, yeah, we should probably leave that offset like that. So divisions, you can add some edge loops there, but that looks good. So the next part of it looks a little more rounded and normally I would just continue extruding up this model, but since this is going to have those nice um, hardened corners, I'm actually going to use something with a few more polys. So let's make another cylinder. And let's bring it up. And for this one, I'm going to go back into the channel box. Again, I'm going to go to the input section. And the subdivision axis, instead of clicking and dragging with my middle mouse button, I'm going to type in a number. Uh, so let's try 10, see if that does something. That's still, eh. 12 actually looks pretty good. And the good thing about 12 is that your edge loops are actually kind of lining up. So if we have to merge them together, this would probably be a good, uh, a good setup to have because when we go to merge these diverts, then they're already there and we don't have to create any. Okay, so. Let's scale this down a little bit and just select the verts and, um, and then the faces. And if I hold down tab and click and drag, it'll select um, by just kind of hovering over it. And same thing, if you need to deselect, just hold down tab and click and drag. It's a nice new selection tool. Uh, there's another one, the paint selection tool, and that's sort of similar, but you have to hold down control to deselect. Let me go back to the move tool, hitting W. I'm gonna hit uh, control E to extrude, and let me go back to my modeling toolkit. So extrude, and I'm gonna bring that in a bit. So I'm just gonna scale that. Pull it in, scale it a little more. Actually, let's give it another extrude. And when I extrude, I just hit R to scale and it'll scale from the center of that selection. And we'll do this, bring that up and then just Click on one face and then shift double click to select the entire edge loop. And what I'm going to do for there is uh, do another extrusion. Scale that down a little bit and then scale that out. And I could use these options here, but I like to use the scale tool. I'm just kind of a habit of mine. Okay, so now let's actually select this top here. Just do a tab, click and drag, control E, and I'm gonna scale again from the center, and I'm gonna do a control E again and push down. Hmm, interesting. Looks like there are some faces here that were not here before, or that shouldn't be here. Um, it seems like maybe I have extruded something on accident. So let me do control one. So it does a, um, yeah, looks like I, yeah, this is, so this is isolate select and you get in and out of it by uh, holding down control and, and hitting one on your keyboard. Um, I didn't mean to do this. So let's just take these and you know what, let's just select all of those. So kind of go around to the side, make sure I only selected those. And let's do a merge to center. So I'm gonna to go to edit mesh and merge to center. And that's gonna bring everything together into one point. Now I can get out of that isolation, isolated select by hitting control one. Um, it's also here in the show menu. So isolate select, view selected. 
So control one to show everything again. Um, and you know, I think I might actually add um, an edge loop here. I may have had one, I can't quite, can't quite remember. Um, so I'm gonna go into the multi-cut tool and I'm gonna hold down control and normally it will add uh, um, an edge loop kind of like this. But since I only have um, triangles here, it's not wanting to give me that nice edge loop that it would if these were quads. So I can do one of two things. I can, um, I can come to the side view and I can use the multi-cut tool. I can start by clicking outside of the mesh and holding down shift and dragging and it'll create an edge loop that way. Um, or I can add an edge loop and I'm holding down control by the way and I'm clicking, it gives you this preview. And then from there, what I can do is select that edge loop and just uh, move it up the, the geometry. So if I do mesh tools and then slide edge, and it says drag with middle mouse button to slide, and I do that, it slides up the model. And then you can you know scale this one back if it, if it changed the shape any at all. All right, so we'll pull that up a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna bring my, my image back just for a second. Okay, so, you know, this almost could be square. I'm just gonna go with six faces. It, I can't quite tell what it is from the concept, so I'm just gonna do six because it's nice and round still. All right, so. So I'm gonna double click on the rotate icon and open up my tool settings. I'm gonna go to the uh, step snap, change that to absolute, and the increments you can change here or leave it 15. So whenever I rotate, it actually moves it in 15 degree increments. I change that to 90, it's gonna move in 90 degree increments. I reset my tool. You can also adjust the rotation of an object by going into the channel box and typing in a value. I'm gonna change mine back to zero. So it rotates back to uh, the correct direction. Now you can actually add some um, edge loops along the top and some geometry there. Uh, by default, it's gonna have um, just this insided polygon and you don't really want that. So you wanna give it some, um, some subdivisions along the cap and that way you'll have some quads and some tries there. And if you want to do subdivisions along the height, you can add some extra polygons there as well. So I'm going to scale this in the uh, Y direction and then scale it down so it actually fits and is the correct size. And I'm going to double click this edge loop to adjust it to maybe scale it in just a little bit to give it a little more character. I don't think I actually need this edge loop, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it by hitting uh, Control and Delete. Uh, if you use Control and Delete, it'll delete the edge loops and the verts. So if you just select the edge and then hit Delete, this is what's going to happen. Your verts are going to stay there and they're going to create extra polygons. It'll up your polygon count or keep it the same. So you'll actually need to delete those. Now it's nice to have the inputs, but if you try and edit the inputs after you've uh, changed the mesh at all, uh, this is what's gonna happen. So kind of crazy, not really helpful. So at this point, you're probably gonna wanna go ahead and delete your history on your model. All 
Okay, so I want to um, I want to have my edge loops on the um, the top, sort of align with the uh, the edge loops on the bottom of the the model or the body of the inkwell. So I'm gonna try something um, that I normally wouldn't do. What I would usually do is uh, actually go back and recreate this piece, but I'm going to select my model and then go to the multi-cut tool and then I'm going to start the cut outside of the mesh and then drag to the opposite side. And I'm sort of trying to align the edges with the ones that you can see below. Again, this isn't something I needed to do, but I'm just wanting to show how to uh, use that, that multi-cut tool just to slice through the faces. All right, so I have a lot of extra fit edges here, and what I'm gonna do is go through and delete those now. Just go into um, edge mode and double click the edge and then I'll go ahead and select a few of them. And I'm just holding down shift and double clicking to select all of the edge, all of the edge loop. All right. And then I'm going to do control delete and that'll remove any of those extroverts. I'm gonna go and make sure the, uh, the tip of it is merged into one point here. So I've got a lot of verts that were created when I did that. So if I do a merge to center, and then if I go to the top of it and do the same thing, Select those verts. And then I'm going to hit G just to repeat that last command. Okay, so I'm going to keep on going with the pin tip. I'm going to select these faces and then I'm going to go to extrude and pull those up just a little bit. And I'm going to click and then Hold down shift and double click the next face so that it selects the entire edge loop. I'm going to extrude that one more time and then I'm going to scale that out so that it extrudes a bit. Okay, so I need to actually move my pivot point. So I'm going to go to Modify and Center Pivot. And that way I'll put the uh, pivot point in the center of the mesh. So if you double click on any of the uh, move, scale, rotate tools, it'll give you the, the uh, tool settings. And sometimes your, um, your uh, pivot point, the um, axis gets changed. So all you have to do is come up into the uh, settings and click that uh, reset tool button. And that'll zero out any changes to the pivot point that have occurred. And go through all these and just hit reset tool just to make sure. Now my, my pivot point is actually pointed down so what I need to do next is to click on freeze transformations in modify and that will zero out any transformations I might have had and change those settings to, to all, all to zero.
scale it down just a little bit. And I'm going to rotate it. But um, let me freeze the transformations before I do that so that I get those scale values off. All right, so rotate that just to kind of get it close to the position in the concept. I'm going to zero those out. It goes back. And I'm going to hit undo. OK, so looking at the concept, um, <laughs> looking at the feather, it's um, it's this nice, fluffy, almost animal tail looking thing. So doing this is going to be a little um, interesting. So I might actually make some stylistic changes to it just to make it a lot easier to model. Otherwise, I might end up having to do some uh, fur to get it to look like this. And another image plane for the feather. And I've centered it sort of on the axis, or at least tried to. Uh, the way I move my pivot point there to uh, rotate it directly from the center of the feather uh, was I hit D on my keyboard and I moved the pivot point over and then whenever I got it to where I wanted it, I just hit D again and it'll go back into uh, regular pivot point mode. You can also use the insert key on your keyboard. That'll work as well. I'm going to start with the cylinder. Let's get it kind of small and go over to the inputs. Let's change the um, subdivisions around the axis to 12 this time. So right now it's 20, and if I do 12, it'll reduce it a lot. Height, drag that. And I guess we can just scale it from here. I'm just scaling it in the Y direction. Radius will make it a little skinnier. And if you want to add subdivisions along the height of it, which will um, give it some edge loops so it can bend, just middle mouse button, click and drag. And I'm going to go with, looks like about 40. So it's pretty dense. Um, I might actually want to reduce the amount. Let's do six there, and let's try 30. All right, still got enough to where it'll bend OK, but um, not so high poly that it's really eating up the poly count. And if you hit F on your keyboard, it'll focus in on uh, whatever you have selected. So. If your camera is being weird, just hit F and you can zoom in. Okay, so from here I'm probably going to start just building out uh, chunks of polygons. And an uh, easy way to do that is to just use the append to polygon tool. Excuse me, I shouldn't say append to polygon tool. Create polygon tool is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to place a few 
points. And create a face. And from there, I can use the append a polygon tool. So whenever you're using the append a polygon tool, you can see that whenever you'll click an edge and it'll turn to this like magenta color and you'll see these little arrows that are following along the edge. So they're pointing in the direction that you want to click. So if you click on this one, the next one you would click would be this one. Um, that's not going to be really applicable to what we're doing right now, but whenever you're trying to close a hole or uh, join polygons and you use this tool, you're going to want to follow the edge or the recommended edge because otherwise the face will flip. Okay, so now I can place a point, and you can see that there's this green darker line here, and this one's a little lighter. That means if I were to click outside of here, the polygon would flip and hit backspace to delete it. So I need to actually go in this direction to create it. Hit enter, and same thing here. Now I could be using the extrude tool or extrude edge, that would work as well. In fact, let's let's do that from this here on out. So control E. And one more time. Okay, so that'll be our first um, feather piece. I'm just gonna I'm gonna build it in pieces rather than trying to do the whole thing. And I'm gonna go back to the create polygon tool. And one thing to to note is that this is just a single. Um, single-sided polygon there's only there's no thickness to it at this point and what we'll do once we build it is we'll extrude the entire thing and it'll give it a little more thickness go back to the front view and I'm trying to build in in quads now you can see that this one is um, it's black so the face is black. Now if you go around to the other side, it's going to be gray. And the reason behind this is that the face is just flipped. Um, if your lighting is set to two-sided lighting, you'll have lighting on both sides of the face. But that's actually going to be a little more helpful to have it turned off because it'll show you which faces are reversed. So all I have to do from here is select this polygon and then I go to mesh display and then I click reverse and it's going to flip the normal and or flip the face and it's going to be facing this way instead of back this way. And we can go back into our front view and continue to adjust from there. I'm going to use the append a polygon tool instead of extrude it. It is a little faster. Um, let me back up, backspace, and enter, and then Y to reactivate the same tool. Oops. Having a little trouble clicking it. Okay. All right. And let's keep building here and go and do the create polygon tool again. So I'm going to kind of create this in chunks. So this will be one chunk, this will be one, this will be another, this will be another, 
and this one and this one will be two as well. And I'm doing that because it's just a lot um, easier for, for creating like decent looking edge flow. And once you create the first polygon, you just go to append to polygon and select the face. And Y to reactivate that tool. I'm going to turn wireframe on shaded on again so I can see what's going on. Sometimes I'm not really sure which direction I'm supposed to be making the polygon, so I'll put it somewhere in the middle and then backspace and start over. Okay, so that actually is a good example of the direction. So if I click this, this edge here and then I try and place a point here, it'll tell me that the edge is complete there. And if I try and come over here and click, it's going to flip that polygon or backspace a few times. So I need to actually follow the direction of the triangles. And I can create a face that way. Let me try that one more time. Hit enter. I must have hit delete. All right, I'm going to continue doing that. Um, for this one, let's just create Uh, so I've got that line there, so let me change that point to right there instead. And this could be a triangle, but I guess I'll make it a quad. And I forget every time. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna actually add an edge loop. Since I've got an edge loop going down this way, it might be beneficial to divide this up just a little more too. So I'm just using multi-cut tool and I'm holding down control. And then whenever I get the edge loop in the place I want, I just uh, click it to commit it. Okay, so this one, I probably should snap these these edges here to the, um, the grid. So if I hold down X on my keyboard and snap them, you can see that they snap to the grid in sort of the average center of what I have selected. But what I need to do is change a setting. And that's going to be in your move snap settings. There's this option called retain component spacing. And I'm going to turn that off because I want those all to align with the axis. So now whenever <clears throat> I hold down X, and snap, it snaps exactly to the grid. So I probably should do the same with this one too, so that they fit onto the, the stem, I guess you call it, of the feather. <laughs> so sometimes you have to, um, you actually have to snap it to a different, um, a different axis or grid line. Okay, and I'm going to go back to that um, 
and create polygon tool. And I'm going to try and follow this, this current edge flow that I've got going on here. OK, so that one actually looks reversed because it's black. So again, select it, go to reverse, and the face should uh, turn gray. So I'm going to use that tool again. Actually, let me go and do the um, append to polygon tool because I always forget to do switch. And I messed that one up, so let's try starting from here. Probably a good time to save if you haven't. And some of mine automatically saves to that um, that scenes folder. And it looks like I need maybe another edge loop going down this space. So I'm use the multi-cut tool here. I'm gonna select the mesh. And Y to reactivate that tool. Mm, you know, I don't think I need it on that last one, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to spend a little time kind of moving these around, making them look um, a little more uniform, but still, you know, working with the model. Um, something I like to do as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Let me align these edges, straighten those up a little bit, and I'm going to straighten these up a little bit too. And double click the edge and I'm going to extrude that edge. I'm just going to pull it out a little bit. And that's going to give it um, a nice quadded edge. 
me want to go in and fix it up a little bit. Same thing here. Control E. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm just going to use the scale tool for this, or just the move tool. <laughs> Whoops. Let me uh, back up just a little bit. So it's usually good to <laughs> check your work in the perspective view. And I think I might add a cut here, just because it doesn't seem to be bending enough. Um, I don't really like the way that cut happens, so I'm going to use the multi-cut tool and just kind of drag outside of the mesh, and it'll make a straight edge there. Use a soft select, just, I just hit B, and my fall off is already at a good range. If you want to change that uh, area of effect, something larger, just hold down B and left click and drag. All right, so I'm going to go back to that uh, create polygon tool. And I'm going to start over here on this side. And again, it's flipped for some reason. So I think it just depends on like which direction you you go when you're building. So just reverse that. And you can tell you have soft select turned on because if you hit B on your keyboard, it'll turn yellow. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to go back into a pen to polygon tool. My feather kind of looks a little big on the left side, so I'm going to scale that down in just a minute, but...
Make sure it's all selected off of for that one. Mesh tools, create polygon tool. You can either select a face or just select it as an object. It's up to you. Mesh display, reverse, and then we can go back to the append to polygon tool and continue building our feather. Enter and then go back and append a polygon tool. those up a little bit. All right, so we go back to the append polygon tool by hitting Y on my keyboard. So let me start with that one. Again, I could be using the extrude edge, but this is just a little a little faster, a few less clicks that you have to do. And we are almost done. I'm so excited. Create polygon. Okay, again. So um, it looks like if I were to maybe start from this side, yeah. So if you go right to left to create the polygon, it won't create it flipped. So you can avoid going up into mesh display and adjusting it or flipping it. Okay, let me go back into that Panda Polygon tool. I'm going to be a little lazy here and just go ahead and extend them all the way down. And then come back in and just add some cuts that way. And I'm making sure not to get that edge right there, that, that vert. And now I can go back and add the edge loops.
Interesting. Looks like I may have already um, done something to this one. I may have already extruded it, but maybe I didn't actually move it when I extruded it. So if I click one of those verts, no, it actually doesn't look like I messed it up. So let's, okay, it worked this time. Weird. Okay, so let's, um, let's fix this feather up because I don't feel like it's doing quite And the benefit of having it uh, be a flat, flat, a flat plane at this point is that you really only have to work in one direction. So I'm going to even out the thickness of each side of the feather now. Oh, whoops. Make sure you're uh, using move with the um, soft select rather than scale. <laughs> or at least in this view. And for this one, I'm just going to cut across the base and get rid of this edge loop. Okay. So these are kind of um, squiggly and if you want to straighten them up a little bit, um, usually what I'll do is just select one of the points here or add a point with the multi-cut tool and you can just drag to the end point and it'll create a new a new edge there and then you just select that old one by double clicking it in edge mode and hit delete so it'll straighten up that topology a little bit go ahead and do it for a few of them Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up just so we can get through this a little faster. I'm just um, placing a point at the beginning of the edge loop and then placing a point at the, uh, the end so that I can straighten out everything and delete the ones that are kind of crooked. So there's a little difference in the um, amount of polygons here on the side versus on this side. Uh, so what I'm going to do is maybe reduce this just a little bit. And I'm going to select the edge and I'm going to use uh, slide edge. I'm just clicking on the middle mouse button and dragging to the left. 
or the right. We'll I'm going to delete that one. And what that does is it uses the um, the face of the mesh, or it uses the mesh to uh, slide the edge along. Again. Okay. <laughs> okay, so sliding the edge on that one isn't working the way I was hoping it would, so I'm just going to actually move it down in space. And... I'm going to add another one there just for keeping them even. OK. Okay, so this is what I have so far. Yeah, I guess we could leave it on the gradient. <laughs> um, so it's just a flat, flat plane right now. And what I'm gonna do is just select the, uh, the faces, do Control E for extrude, and well, I guess we'll extrude it forward. And we do 0.09. And what I'll do with the, the rest of them is I'll do the same thing. So select it, extrude, thickness 0 0.09. And that way they'll all be uniform. I could have combined this into one object, but here's another way to do it. I'm just hitting G to repeat the last command. Let me move that up just a little bit. It's too co it's too close. Okay, so let's see if I select that edge. I'm going to do an average on it. It's going to soften it up just a little bit. But I might actually want to do that other edge loop as well. I'm going to go ahead and save. And 
And even though I'm clicking average vertices, it's still going to work. If I have edges selected, it'll work with verts or edges selected. Hmm. So that's nice and like squishy, but I don't really like the way it's looking. So if you want to select this outer edge, let just click on one face and then shift double click on the other or the, the next one and it'll select the entire edge loop. And if you scale it, if you scale it that much, just kind of crazy. I'll leave it a little thicker. Again, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. Okay, so I want to make the um, the edges line up with that this the center of the feather. For, I don't know what it's called. Oops, looks like I missed one down here. Okay, let's go back to the front view, and I'm just going to grab those outer verts and do a Hold down X and snap. I'm going to pull them into the, uh, the mesh there. And I'm just going to use shift and click and drag outside of the verts to select those all. And then snap them. And then drag them back just a little bit. Oops, got one I didn't mean to get. And it's probably a good idea to look actually at the back, just in case I might have grabbed one that I didn't mean to. But it looks good so far. Look at the top view. Okay, so it looks like this piece needs to be pulled in just a bit. There we go. Front view. Whenever I'm moving something, uh, now that it's been extruded, I'm making sure to actually uh, click and drag outside of the, the thing I want to select because if I just click it and move it, you can see the backside doesn't move with it. So you want to click and drag and select both of those verts and move them at the same time. I'm going to hit five on my keyboard to go back to shaded mode. And I'm going to save this. So now what I'm going to do is actually combine this entire thing. Mesh, combine, and it's one object. And I'm going to change that pivot point just down to the bottom. So control one to isolate it and then hit insert or D and drag that down to the bottom of the model. And there should be yeah, so let's snap it to that point right there. And then hit D again. And now when we rotate it, it rotates from that point. 
Um, so we need to, to bend this. And what I'm going to do, just because, just in case I want to ever save this to use again at some point, it's probably a good idea to save a copy of it before you change it. So let me delete delete history on everything. Okay, so it'll get rid of all that stuff that's on the model. And I'm going to put it on this layer called Feather. And save that. Now I can hide it. And if I hit Control D to duplicate it, you can see it looked like it did a little something, but uh, it's hard to see anything happening because it, it duplicates it and it puts it right on top of the, uh, the other one. And I can remove that from that layer. So now if I hide it, you can see now I've got two feathers and one's hidden. So let me put that back on the zero, zero. So there are a few ways to uh, bend this. I could rig it and use joints to bend it, to deform it, or I can use um, a bend deformer. So I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna do a bend deformer. It seems like an easy, easy option right now. So I'm gonna go to deform and nonlinear, and I'm gonna do a, um, a bend. And that's gonna give me this, this bend handle. It looks just like, like an edge. Um, and the way you work it is you go over here, and since I had that, you have to have something selected. So you have your object selected, and then you go and to deform, and you do nonlinear, and you hit bend. And after you do that, you can come over here to uh, the bend input, and if you take the curvature, if you click on the text there, this middle mouse button, click and drag, you can see that this mesh is bending in that direction. Now I might actually want to have it bend in multiple directions, but for now, let's just bend it backwards a little bit. So I need to actually rotate that bend handle. So let me go to the outliner and there it is right there. So I just want to rotate it 90 degrees in the Y. And now, when I click on Bend 1 and do Curvature, it'll go back. And maybe I don't want the bottom of it to bend. So if I change the low bound, if I drag that up a little bit, there we go. So now it's just curving in that direction, but looks pretty curved in the, the concept, so let's let's actually undo that because we do want to keep it pretty curved. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do one more. I'm going to add uh, deform and let's do let's do twist. So do twist. Okay. So it's going to rotate that a little bit. That's kind of neat. <laughs> a little too much. Um you know, maybe twist is not the uh, the best option for this one. So let me just delete the history on it real quick. So edit, delete by type, history, and that'll get rid of those uh, bend deformers and uh, twist deformer as well. And let me do modify. Um, actually, I'll just leave that as is, and I'll do one more. Let's do one more bend handle on it. But make sure you actually have it selected. Okay, and then let's see. Let's look go the other way with it. OK, 
Okay, so I'm actually rotating the bend handle a little less than a full 90 degrees. Kind of gives it a nice, a nice look. And I'm going to delete the history on that. Delete by type history. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that image plane. It's kind of getting in the way at this point. And one other deformer that's a lot of fun is Lattice. So the Lattice deformer will give you um, kind of a box around your model and you can add divisions based on how much you want to control you want to have over it. Let me change that to lattice point is what I'm looking for. And soft select will work on this as well. So if you want to exaggerate it just a little more, the lattice will probably do that for you. Um, that doesn't look so good, so let me undo that. I'll rotate that a little. Move that a little bit. Okay, so it's got a nice swoopy curve to it. And you know what? Let's see. Eh, that might be a little too much. <laughs> okay. I'll just leave it like this. And delete the history on it. And I'll move that pivot point back to the end of the uh, spine. So D on your keyboard or insert. And let's zoom in there. And let's align it. So if you hold down, um, actually, if you just click on one of the edges while D is activated, it'll align to um, what you have selected. And you can drag it around. And you can see that it kind of tries to follow the direction of whatever it's hovering over. And that actually looks pretty good. So we'll leave that. Hit D again to get out of that option. And we're going to rotate that. And I'm going to hold V to snap to point. And we'll get it close. So the feather goes all the way into the pen. So I can actually delete. Um, a lot of this, these faces here. So if I go to face mode, let's delete all of the faces. Actually, let's there we go. And I'm going to leave a little bit of it. So I'm going to insert an edge loop here, and then cut the rest of it off here. And what I'll do, you don't have to do this um, because this won't be seen, but if you want to close um, the inside of a, a face, what you can do is extrude it and then do a merge to center. And it'll make, make that vert right there. So it'll take those edges that you extruded and merge them. And look, pivot points right there. Well, actually, <laughs> it's still down there, so let me uh, let me change that real quick. Getting really close with the camera, and align by clicking and dragging it, and that should be good. All right, so let's try and fit that into 
the model. Make sure they look kind of close. We need to rotate one just a little bit. Probably would have been smart to make this um, or combine this with the feather before I started bending it and rotating it, painting it, but that's all right. But now I can actually combine the two of them. So mesh and combine. And we will take that pivot point and put it back kind of close to where it was. Because that's going to be easy to rotate it from there. Zoom in. We'll align it to that and kind of move it in there. Okay, just making sure it looks good. And go back into your normal model. And now what we can do is maybe rotate this to look a little better. There we go. Looks pretty cute. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this. I'm going to go ahead and save it. So I started unwrapping it and then I realized I needed to go back and fix part of the model. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that real quick. I'm going to isolate it and then I'm going to go into the modeling toolkit. And wireframe on shaded. Okay, so I'm going to use the multi cut tool. And I'm going to, I usually drag along the edge to kind of place the point. You can click and place it, but I like to make sure I've actually got it by clicking and dragging it. And then if you go to the next edge that you want to cut, and you'll notice there's a, a number here. So if you hold down shift, it'll snap. Uh, to a certain amount, which this, you know, so this would be 50%, so this is halfway through the line. Um, you can change that, that snaps, the, <laughs> that snap step percentage. And if you do like maybe 25%, oops, let me do that one more time. And backspace. Now if I hold shift, I only have 25, 50, and 75 as my options. So I'm going to continue that edge down the side of it. Now, I'm not moving this because I don't want to change the shape of the model because it was a nice, um, it has like a hard edge. It's almost square. Actually, um, I probably shouldn't have done it that way, so I'm going to have to do it every once. So hold down shift and click. Enter, and then click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, and enter. And that way, I'm making sure that it's uniform all the way around. Uh, I probably should do this to the underneath as well. Now these are quads, but um, unless it's a square quad, sometimes I'll triangulate it. Triangulate it. I'm just sliding along the edge to uh, figure out where it goes. Okay. 
Okay. So the reason I did that is so that this model will actually match up with uh, this mesh here. And um, I, I want to get rid of the any inside polygons just so it doesn't, you know, so we don't have extra polys if we don't need them. And also it's just, you know, pointless UVs. So uh, I'm going to add an edge loop really close to the one that's there. And I'm doing that because if I tried to add an edge loop here, it's not going to add because these are triangles that I'm, I'm uh, trying to cut. So I'm just going to basically replace this edge loop with a new one. And then use the um, slide edge tool to kind of get that closer to the, um, the top of the model. Now, now what I'm going to do And delete those. And it's okay if there's a gap right now. I'm going to fix that in just a second. And I'm selecting faces and then using isolate select. And again, holding down tab will select anything you hover over. Okay, so I'm going to delete those polys and I'm going to hit control one to bring that back. All right, so now then there's um, some structure here. What I'm going to do is use the target weld option. And you have the option to merge to the center point. So if you had this set on center and you clicked on the first one and then dragged to the next one that you wanted to snap, um, it would do that. It would meet in the middle. But I don't want that. I want this piece to retain its shape and I want this piece down here to match to it. So I'm going to change that back to target and I'm going to click on the first vert and I'm going to drag to the next one. Same thing with this. And it's going to weld those all together. So while I didn't need those polys on the bottom part, I, I wanted them so that I could actually merge these two together. Now we don't actually have any inside geometry to worry about. Okay, so now we can actually move on to unwrapping.